Whether you're a singles player or a doubles player, it is important that you can control the direction of the ball when you hit it, especially on the third shot. In doubles, you might want to hit toward one player and avoid another one. In singles, when you hit your third shot, you likely want to make the returner stretch. Right? They've got to cover the whole court all by themselves. And so here's a little drill I'm doing with my friend Bill over there. He's the server. I return it. And when he hits that third shot, his ball has to pass on the outside of the cones, between the cone and the sideline, right? Keeping the ball away from the middle of the court on that third shot. This is especially useful in a single situation. And so you can see here, it's not that easy for him to do it. He finally gets it. So you can do this too, whether you're a singles or doubles player. All right, here's another drill I like. I like to call this one exploding pyramids, and you can make it even more fun if you put a ball on top of this little cone you have here. And what we do here is we have a little baseline rally, ground strokes in the back of the court, and you are trying to explode the other person's pyramid before they explode yours. You can see why it's so fun if you put a ball on top of it. Now, why would you do this? Well, in regular pickleball, especially in doubles pickleball, you don't hit a lot of baseline shots consecutively like this. But you do hit one shot, and that is when you hit the return of serve. And I think it's pretty important you can control the direction and the depth of your return of serve, right? So you get it to the right person, so you avoid the wrong person, so you get the depth you want. So this is a nice little activity you can use yourself or with your players where you're trying to hit the other person's cone, or better yet, the cone and the ball on top to make a nice little pyramid, so it explodes. You get to really work on your depth control and your height control and your speed control, even the spin and the direction. Right? This is a really useful activity. Even better if you can hit forehands and backhands. Here's another little activity I like to call the unfair game. And this is a competitive game where you have one person starting at the non-volley line or probably better yet, half a step behind it. And this is a half court game. I mean, you could do full court if you wanted, but this half court game, one person has the unfair advantage. They get to receive the ball when it is nice and high and juicy, and then they smack it. And what has to happen is the defender has to find a way to get out of this jam. They have to try to find a way to rescue themselves from this really difficult defensive position. You can see why it's so unfair. And I like this activity because even though we're doing it one-on-one, -on -one, it simulates what happens often in doubles, right? It's pretty often that you find yourself back toward the baseline and your opponent's up at the baseline and they get high balls that they are now hitting hard. And can you find a way to A, get that ball back in the court and B, can you find a way to neutralize the opponent maybe by playing a good drop that forces them to hit an upward ball? This is a really important defensive skill uh, and if you're going to add scoring to this, and I recommend that you do typically add scoring to these kinds of games, it makes them a little more interesting, then uh, what I usually do is I say, okay, the person at the net has this big unfair advantage, so they've got to win more points. They've got to win, let's say, 10 points to win the game. And the person who is defending, let's say that, uh, well, because you have such a disadvantage, then you only need to win, let's say, five points to win the game, right? And you can vary that a little bit depending on the skill level of the people involved. So the unfair game is a very fun game. It's a good way to work on your defensive skills. It also honestly gives the person at the net a chance to work on uh, getting a high ball and then hitting it down and hitting it hard and giving themselves a chance to maintain the advantage they have when they are up at the net. All right, finally, I want to talk about this game. One of my favorites, we do these in pretty much all of our pickleball clinics. I even use this as a way to sort players by skill level. And you can call this game whatever you want. Um, I used to call it a pressure drill when I was a kid playing tennis, but call it whatever you want. So the way this one works is both players start at three-quarter court, that sort of uncomfortable position in the transition zone. No one loves playing pickleball from there, but the truth is if you're going to be a good pickleball player, you're going to find yourselves there. You need to be able to play from there. And so what you do here is one person feeds the ball, and the rule I usually make is you got to get it to the other person in the air. So you can't just drop it in the kitchen or anything like that. You feed the ball to the other person in the air, and then anything goes. You play out the point. Balls can bounce, balls can be volleyed, you can move back, you can move up, anything goes. So this happens a lot in real pickleball, right? That you find yourselves hitting some sort of shot from three-quarter court and then having to decide, do you stay put, do you move forward, do you back up? What do you do? How do you handle this difficult position and try to get yourself out of it? So there you go, there's a few different drills that you might use yourself if you're training, if you want to work on a few different skills, or if you're a coach looking for some new drills, then you might like to use it too. 
Finally, I will remind all of you that if you are into lesson plans, if you're looking for drills, you will really like what we have to offer at Pickleball Coaching International. We've got tons of videos that are free when you're a PCI member, and we even have premium lesson plans that you can purchase whether you're a PCI member or not. And this is a really helpful way to kind of plan your lessons. If you're looking to shake things up a little bit with your players, you might really be interested. Head over to PCIPickleball.com, check it out.